Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. You are watching SOS. My name is Lakeisha Hines, and I'm saving our sex lives one bedroom at a time. I am happy to be here with you all. Somebody has already dropped a comment. Hello, Adrian. What's up? <laughs> you are welcome. He said, thank you for another episode. You got it, my brother. You got it. You got it. You got it. You all, we are talking about when sex hurts today. I'm starting a new series. This is a new series. Okay. So today is about the physical pain and the emotional damage that it causes. Right. But as we go throughout this series, the goal and the intent is to talk about the psychological pain and the emotional pain and so this will be, like I said, a series. So I want you to hang in here with me because we're definitely going to be going through different aspects of pain. OK, so make sure that you stay tuned. Make sure, make sure, make sure that you stay tuned because, again, this is, I think, going to be something extremely impactful for each and every one of you. I truly believe there's something that you all can take away from. But before we get started, I just want to share something with you right quick. So don't swipe left or right. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to the Couples Academy app. The Couples Academy app is your go-to hub for how to do marriage right. Get started with our app today by perusing our amazing features that conveniently allow you to connect. This app is packed with powerful content and resources to help you grow and stay connected. With this app, you can watch our messages, find marriage resources, watch, listen, and read the real life stories of restored couples, sign up for events, read articles and blog posts, stay up to date with push notifications, Share your favorite messages via Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or email, and download messages for offline listening. For more information about the Couples Academy app, go to couplesacademy.org. All right. All right. Welcome back. Are you guys ready? Let's jump in. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Please let me know who you are and where you're streaming from. You know, I like to shout you out. And please, if you have any questions or you have comments or concerns, please feel free to drop those in the chat as well. I love answering your questions. Don't wait till the end. You all have a tendency to do that. Don't wait till the end. Drop your questions in the chat. All right. So let's jump into this topic today, which we're talking about when sex hurts. And really what I'm talking about is painful sex, specifically in women, intercourse pain or dyspareunia, dyspareunia. OK, um, it, it's it's one of those things that I don't know if it's talking, talking, <laughs> spoken or talked to. Um, or talked about a lot. And so I want to be the one to, to put it out there to let people know that this is a real thing. 
this is a real thing, okay? Dyspareunia, I think I said Nuria. Dyspareunia, dyspareunia, okay? D-Y-S-P-A-R-E-U-N-I-A. -E You've never heard of this. This is the medical term for it. And it can truly cause a lot of problems in your sex life. So, you know, not only, <clears throat> as I said, would it be physically painful, but there's also negative emotional effects as well. And so the first thing that we want to do is talk about the diagnosis of it. OK, first thing, diagnosis. You've got to do a medical history. Hopefully you are talking to your healthcare provider about any pain that you're having. And this is not just for women. OK, I'm, I'm specifically talking about women, but it's not just women because men can have pain during sex as well. And so what the advice that I'm going to give will be very similar for men as well. Talk to your doctor. Let your doctor know what's going on and they will take a history. They're going to ask you, when did your pain begin? Where does it hurt? How did it feel? Um, does it happen with every particular partner that you sleep with, every sexual position. Now, most of you um, who, who are in my audience, most of you are married, but doesn't matter um, if you're having sex with other people or have had sex with other people, whatever the case may be, right? Has it been with every sexual partner that you have had? And is it every sexual position? And so they also, your healthcare provider might, might also talk to you about you know, an experience with childbirth? And have you had any past surgeries? They may ask you about previous partners, not to get all up in your business to make you feel bad if you've had multiple partners, but this is a thorough medical history, okay? Then they might do a pelvic exam. And so they're going to look for any types of infection, any types of irritation. They may try to see if they can locate the pain by also doing an exam, gentle pressure and the genitals um, and also the pelvic muscles. So they may do a visual exam also and use a speculum, which, you know, most ladies, if you are a lady, you've got a, a pap smear before. OK, so they may do that or use the same instrument to be able to just explore and see if there's anything that they can see visually going on that might be the source of your pain. There are multiple treatments and your treatment will vary depending upon um, what the cause of the pain is, what the root of the pain is. If it's an infection, obviously they'll try to give you medication to treat the infection. Um, if there's a medical condition, they may create a treatment plan for you uh, to deal with whatever that medical condition is. It could be lubrication issues, okay? That's probably one of the easiest fixes because you can just buy lubrication, right? And a lot of ladies who are... Um, going through menopause, you'll experience a lot of changes vaginally, okay? So then definitely <clears throat> you will have to have that conversation with your physician to see what needs to happen. There may need to be some hormone uh, therapy going on, or it could just be lubrication. It, multiple things depends on the root. What is the root cause of the pain? So they'll try to investigate that first. And um, there's topical estrogen that they might use again, depending on what's going on with you. There are all different types of drugs out there. We know with drugs, most of them have side effects. Some of them cause hot flashes. Um, some of them cause risk of stroke, blood clots, you know, all different things. So you want to make sure that you're talking to your doctor. OK, because there is a lot that's out there. Some other treatments they can do desensitization therapy so you can learn vaginal relaxation exercises to help decrease the pain. Counseling is also something that might be used. Sex therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy can also help when we're talking about the psychological aspects of it. All right. So that's first beginning with diagnosis. Now, what can cause this painful sex in women? Well, most times not enough, not enough lubrication. And sometimes not having enough lubrication is because there's not enough stimulation. There's not enough arousal. Okay. And now your partner can help out in that area. And your partner may be the reason why you are not experiencing that stimulation that you need for proper lubrication. So that's a conversation with your partner. Sometimes as women, because we don't want to hurt our partner's feelings, we have a tendency to go along to get along. Some personality styles, you have a tendency to go along to get along. But when it comes to this, 
When you are experiencing painful intercourse, you have got to open your mouth. You have got to use your words and communicate and let your partner know. They can't do anything if they don't know anything, okay? So there has to be a conversation between you and your partner. Now, if you are with someone who is stimulated easily, easily aroused, and pretty much ready to go, but it takes you longer, but because they're ready, you go ahead and go along with it, that can cause pain because you're not lubricated enough, okay? So what that means is, again, you have to have that conversation with your partner. I need you to slow down. I'm not quite ready yet. I'm not there yet. Those are the words that you have to communicate and then you need your partner. If partners, you are the ones that are watching today, you may wanna just check in. You may want to check in with your wife. You may want to check in and just ask, hey, have you been engaging in sex a little too soon? And when I say too soon, I mean, are you ready physically? Are you stimulated? Are you aroused? Is there enough vaginal lubrication? And now, fellas, you can feel that. She can't always feel, but you most certainly can. So ask her, is it a situation where she's engaging and she's not quite ready yet? Because that can cause pain. So we may need to increase the amount of foreplay. Now, that was a whole nother episode. You can go back and you can look because I did a whole episode on foreplay. And there are a lot of times couples are not engaging in enough foreplay before they go to intercourse, which, again, can cause there to be pain because you're not ready yet. The woman's not ready yet. So now there are some some cases where there are different infections and different things that can cause there to be pain. Vaginismus is one of them. And this one is where uh, a lady will get involuntary spasms in the vaginal muscles. And that can be psychological because if sex was painful before, she may have fear of being hurt and then causes her vaginal muscles to contract, the vaginal walls to contract. And that definitely can cause a lot of pain. Vaginal infections like yeast infections, those things can cause discomfort and pain during sex. If there are oh man, problems with the ovaries, right? There might be cysts on the ovaries, which can cause pain as well. Menopause, this is a big one. This is that life change, right? That takes place that what happens during menopause is that the vaginal lining can lose its normal moisture. It can lose elasticity. It also can become drier. The walls can become thinner, which will cause pain. Women who have been pregnant, there could be an ectopic pregnancy. This is where the egg develops outside of the uterus. That can cause pain during intercourse. Having sex too soon after surgery or childbirth can cause pain. If there's been some type of injury to the vulva or the vagina, that can include a tear from childbirth or if during um, labor and delivery there was a a episiotomy or cut made in the uh, perineum, which is that area between the vaginal opening and the anal opening. And a lot of times, um, especially way back when, um, doctors used to automatically cut it, which was like the most asinine thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Why would you automatically do that? Assuming that that's what was needed. Um, And now, thank God for modern medicine, we're not doing that automatically. It's only done if needed, right? But there is a cut that's torn um, or that's made there, which can cause a lot of pain. And there has to be stitching that's done. So if we jump back in too soon, after having um, childbirth or from that episiotomy, that can cause pain. STIs, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, and infections that could be genital warts, herpes. Um, there's chlamydia, right? There's all different types of STDs and STIs. And so that can cause pain during intercourse, which is why I'm saying go see your doctor, okay? Um, vulvodynia, vulvodynia. This is um, chronic, chronic pain that affects the woman's external sexual organs, the vulva, right? That would be the labia, the clitoris, the vaginal opening, all of that could be in one spot. It could be in different areas. And the crazy thing about this one is doctors don't know what causes it. So there's no known cure, but self-care, 
medical treatments combined can bring relief for sure. Um, let's see what else, what else? Oh, PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. So this is where the tissues that are deep inside of the woman are badly inflamed. And then the pressure from the intercourse causes deep pain. So that's another one. I think I talked about ovaries. Let me see. Um, uterus problems, problems with the cervix, the cervix where, you know, and Okay, so in some cases, the penis can actually reach the cervix at maximum penetration. So if there are problems with the cervix, like infections, that can cause pain during deep penetration. Now that can be relieved with changing of your position. Your partner may not be happy about that, but that can help give you some relief. All right, so now, how does this affect us emotionally? We're going to talk about it on the other side of this break. I, I don't see any questions, so you must not have questions today, but I'll give you an opportunity. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're watching SOS. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. If you were just watching, we have another last chance weekend coming up November 10th through the 12th. You need to have your face in a place, especially if you are on the brink or the verge of divorce or separation or your marriage is just not in a good place and you're just not sure if you guys are going to make it. Give yourself the gift that keeps on giving and come to last chance weekend so that you truly can restore your marriage and get what it is that you need so that you can have what it is that you say that you want. All right. So again, that's November 10th through the 12th. It is not too late to sign up. There is still space available. Please make sure you do that have your face in the place. Oh my gosh. So Adrian, I just saw your comment. I absolutely love it. Adrian says, unfortunately, all of these asinine things with medicine have caused our community to stray away from seeing the doctor. There are still practices that need more review in medicine. 100%. I agree, Adrian. And, you know, unfortunately, we can't use that as an excuse not to go. You know, we still have to go. We still have to get treatment. We still have to be seen. We have to take care of our bodies. We only get one. We only get one. So we have to do our best to take care of it um, as much as humanly possible. Because again, we only get one, right? And definitely some of the things that are going on that cause there to be issues in the bedroom are things that are resolvable. There are things that can be repaired. And we just have to do what needs what needs to be done, right, to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves. So, all right, let's continue our conversation about this painful intercourse. And I want to talk about how that impacts um, people emotionally, not just the woman, but also her partner as well. I mean, you know, what guy is OK with knowing that what he's doing is causing his partner pain. I don't know any guy that's okay with that, unless that's the goal and that's the intent. Now that's another conversation. That's another episode. That's a whole nother show. Okay. Now I'm talking about unintentional 
pain that we're not trying to experience pain. We're trying to get pleasure. However, we're experiencing pain. That's what I'm talking about. And so um, it can cause there to be hesitation on the male partner's part to have sex with his uh, with this woman because he's thinking, oh my gosh, you know, what if I hurt her? There are times where it's been so painful for her, where women literally have been crying in the midst of intercourse. And so the most guys are not going to be okay with that. And it can cause them to proceed with caution, to be hesitant, to initiate, to be hesitant to engage in intercourse because they don't want to hurt their partner. And then also on the other side, the flip side of this is the partner who's experiencing the pain may tense up because of a previous experience of there being pain. And so her body, her muscles, all of the, her entire body can become stiff as a board, not to mention um, the vaginal walls. Everything can tense up and tighten up and that automatically can make sex more painful, but she's operating off of past experience. And so one of the main things that we will need to do again is to get to the root of what's causing the pain, treat that, and then we have to move back into intercourse cautiously and carefully because there will be um, some 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 mental things that are going on within her because of what has happened in the past. Um, all right, I see Kimberly says causes a lot of apprehension because now you're thinking too hard. Exactly, exactly. And now you're not even present. You're not even present in the moment. Physically, you are there, but mentally and emotionally, your mind is on um, bracing yourself for pain and and looking for anticipating pain versus just focusing on enjoying the moment and the pleasure of it all. And so it can be 100% distracting for both of you and cause you both not to enjoy that encounter. So we definitely know we have to proceed with caution after we've gotten treatment and everything that we need to do. We have to ease our way back in. So let's talk about some quick things that you all can do at home prior to you getting to the doctor that can help you with pain during sex. You may want, I already talked about lubrication. Like that's a big thing. If vaginal dryness is the culprit, then you definitely want to make sure that you're using a lubricant. And you may have to play around with some, some different ones until you get to the one that works best for you. That is so important. Um, I recommend something that is water-based, especially if you're super sensitive down there. I wouldn't go with a silicone base. I would go with a water base, okay? But definitely you want to use a lubricant if you're not experiencing enough um, lubrication. And then um, changing positions can be so powerful. I mentioned that already, especially if your partner is one who frequently likes deep penetration, but that's painful for you because of whatever is going on, maybe something with the cervix. I don't know, but um, if they typically enjoy deep penetration, then you know, you're going to need to change positions and they're going to have to give you a break with the deep penetration. Um, or again, if you're able to find a position that can work for you and they still feel as if they're getting that deep penetration that they're craving, then that can work. But definitely changing positions is a big one. Um, so literally, you just have to play around with it, you know, until you get to a position that works, that feels good. All right. And then one of the things that I hear a lot of times with couples is they're trying to rush to the finish line. And so I talked about the importance of increasing foreplay because again, you know, maybe uh, ladies, you're, you're moving forward too soon. Maybe you're not quite ready yet. You see your partner's ready and you don't want to, to hinder them. Um, and so you go along with it. And something I didn't mention before, if you have a partner who um, is dealing with ED, and they either have difficulty obtaining an erection, maintaining a, an erection, or um, you know sustaining. And so with that, you may feel pressure to go ahead and move forward because they're ready and you don't want to waste that erection. I get that too. But 
is to your detriment and you're not enjoying the sex anyway. So, you know, there's this mindset of taking one for the team. And we can't always take one for the team because it causes so much harm psychologically, mentally, and emotionally later on. And then that can also, over time, can lead to bitterness and resentment because if your partner is enjoying himself, having the time of his life, he's getting the big O, like everything that he wants out of it, deep penetration, all that, and yet you're left in pain after the fact, that can cause some bitterness, some anger, some resentment. And that can cause you to detach and deconnect from your partner mentally and emotionally. And that's the last thing we want to do. So we do need to slow down. We need to have longer foreplay. And maybe what needs to happen is you and your partner um, discuss the things that are stimulating and arousing for you each. And if your partner is dealing with ED, then he focuses on the things that get you aroused and get you stimulated so that he is not necessarily being stimulated. And once you're ready, you're aroused, you're stimulated, then you can move to doing those things that get him stimulated and get him aroused. And then Hopefully, there's no pain because there's enough lubrication mentally, emotionally. You're relaxed, you're ready, you get him ready, and now we can proceed and do what we need to do. So, um, this is all about delaying penetration. You know, you want to do that until, um, you know, you're fully aroused and, and all the way ready to go. And then the last thing I would say is to communicate. This is one of the biggest, biggest things. We have got to communicate. We have to talk about what we like, what we don't like, what we need, what we don't need. Go fast, go slow, go move to the left, move to the right, switch positions, do what you need to do. But we have to talk because we have to let our partners know when we're in pain or if, you know, something feels good. You don't only want to talk when it's negative. You want to share the good things that are going on as well. So I hope that this was helpful for you all. I told you it's a series. And so part two, we'll be talking about some of the other aspects of when sex hurts. Today was physical and we'll be moving through emotionally, mentally, psychologically, spiritually, all of those things. Okay. So make sure you're tuning in. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends, family, coworkers, colleagues, neighbors, everybody you know about SOS. So you all have a good day. Take care. And I'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye everybody.